Okay, so I'm spending a lot of time wedging myself between the fridge and the side here. Um, what I've decided is, and you can see here from the mess that's down below here, I decided to rip the rest of the ceiling out in the refrigerator surround, at least as much as I can. I'm gonna squeeze myself back in here. And you can see I've put replacement plywood up in here. What I've done is cut these into three sheets, a little bit wider than they needed to be. One to fit them over the ribs here and get some overlap because I can't do it all as one piece and fit it in. Um, just wasn't possible. And uh, you can see here I got a little shim in, and the wiring is, is not it's not wedged, um, but now it's snugged up, so that's good. Um, I've got a notch cut out in my ceiling panel to do this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to put in uh, the tough R board, which you can see down there, which I've been kind of using as a, unfortunately, as a bit of a collector of the all the debris of all the rotted I mean it just fell apart so no use having it so now I've got a, a strong deck here and uh, once I get everything secured insulated and the bubble wrap in um, I'll come back show that real quick and I'll start screwing in the uh, Luan and the FRP panel as the final piece and then put my strip here of the seal tight in here and get it all covered. This is the tough R board layer I put in. I had to piece it in a little bit. Uh, it's not 100% perfect, but we're gonna go back with the bubble layer as well. I also used the Super 77, sprayed the surface, the underside here to get it all sticky. So when I put in the bubble wrap, it'll stick to the ceiling before I put the uh, Luan and the FRP panel. Okay, the insole tarp is in the double bubble, uh, double foil insulation is in. I've tucked it so I didn't trim this off. But what you can see here is a little bit of like quarter inch air gap. I'm going to leave that air gap um, because with insulation sometimes it's better to leave an air gap. Um, I've got the tough R board half inch above. I've got the quarter inch plywood, three eighths plywood, quarter inch plywood or you know it's thicker than a quarter. Uh, tough R board than this. So it's better than what I've had, plus it also has the uh, foam insulation from the original roof sheathing. So there we go, it's up in there. Next step is going to be the uh, Luan and the FRP board. Cam, don't know if you can see it really well, I'll probably see the underside of my chin, <laughs> or two, the two or three that are there. But in the meantime, we're going to get this thing secured where it needs to be, I hope. There we go. Some more of these more screws. Too bad if it's not going to fit.
So, again, a lot of tools, bits, pieces, what have you. Uh, the wiring is not totally secured yet, but you can see I've pretty much sealed up the chase. I got a couple little spots here I need to caulk up a little tighter because the wiring's moved around a little bit. But other than that, I've got a fairly, you know, it was warm out today, so this tape kind of caught real quick and I couldn't adjust it too much, but it is sealed. And I've got the uh, tire perimeter around this panel sealed off. This should be pretty good and weather tight uh, for what's needed here. I may do a little bit of that uh, flashing tape around this, but mm, we'll see. Um, got it all caulked, and uh, oh, caulk is leaking out. I got another bunch of caulk there I got to deal with. So, anyways, next step is I'll get this cleaned up and uh, get the wiring secured with my bag of wire staples. Got here. I'm gonna put that, and the good thing I've got a lot of two by uh, cross supports in here, so nailing those in should be pretty easy. All right, I'm getting ready to put the fridge back in here. As you can see, I put a layer of bubble insulation on this side, very thin, less than a quarter of an inch. There's not much clearance on this side. I've also put in a lieu of the upholstery foam that I ripped out of here is I put in, basically I squeezed it together a little bit, is the double bubble uh, insole tarp to form kind of the air barrier between the cabin and the uh, refrigerator. That's what was here before, but in upholstery form. Form. So what I'm hoping for is I've done this so it'll, it'll fold over and it'll compress as I slide in the fridge and create a nice, see it's a little springy, I'm doing it on a purpose so that when I slide the fridge in, it'll it'll push up against the uh, side of the fridge. That's aluminum. That's aluminum. That's aluminum. So there's no conflict with uh, metals, dissimilar metals. So uh, I'm going to attempt to pick this up and slide this bad boy into position now that I've got all my wiring. If you notice, i got all my wiring, all my wiring cleats, all of them ready to go. This one kind of was an oddball because it goes down to one of the switches, which is fine. But I put it there and I secured it in place. The two wires that kind of dive off through the opening are the 12 volt hookup for the uh, fridge. And so yeah, so I'm getting ready to go. I'm going to get this set up and get it in. Okay, I got the fridge in. Sorry for the uh, not showing me lifting it up into the place, but I had to lift it up from this side. Pick it up from the back very caref carefully by the condenser coils and from the front here and just kind of tilt it and get it kind of up the first the skids up in place then in it was tight i gotta tell you this was very snug going in and i had to kind of rock it a little bit back and forth gently to get it slid back into position but i did get it back into position and uh, what i also did is i went outside once i got sort of in there and i pulled on the skids then i also reached up and you know took my hand in one of these coils and just gently kind of snugged it in without really pulling on the plumbing that much. I just slight snug tugs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a vacuum cleaner. You can see all this stuff that got stuck in my uh, silicone caulk here. But So the fridge is back in uh, with the new parts as you can see here. Um, hopefully things will work. Gonna reconnect the gas. Gonna reconnect the 12 volt. Gonna plug in the um, the regular 110 volt plug in here. In the meantime, I've got a troubleshoot why I don't have any 110 power. I'm also going to put a couple of screws in here to get this um, secure where it needs to be. And uh, yeah, and uh, we'll get this set up and and uh, get it put back together. Okay, I've used a lot more of that flashing tape. I don't know I seem to have a thing for it. I don't know. But anyways, I kind of binged down a little bit and sealed as much as I could under here. I should have put it on before I put the fridge in, but hey, why make things easy? Um, I've secured the 110 plug here. Uh, I've also used the old uh, 
where the clip was for the 12 volt, I've used this as sort of a way to kind of I've looped the extra cable back here and then kind of pushed it out of the way without pinching it. I was going to put this cover back on, but you know, <laughs> I think it secures on these two screws here. And you would think I'd be able to fit this bad boy. And I don't really want to break anything here, like this, the wire, the, the, um, the, uh, you know, the lead here coming off. I don't want to break that. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I could, it should slide in like this, but there's so much crap in the way. And just like, I know this is supposed to go over here. By the time I do that, I may try to fit it back on if I can, but there seems to be so much um, here that's in the way of me trying to get this cover back on. I really don't want to break any connections, and I'd rather put just a shield in front of this uh, for the weather instead, so I may just do that. I do have the other pieces for the pan and the shield here. I'm going to leave them off for now. I might just put the pan on and uh, test it. And then once everything looks like it's working okay, if it is, I'm going to put the shield back on. And, uh, yeah, going to do that and try to get things put together here. Along with, uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, my 110 is not working. My generator is generating power. Uh, don't have any outlets. So I changed the main breaker, 30 amp breaker. And uh, like you've seen in other bits of this video. And... Uh, um, the next thing is I'm going to swap out the GFI outlet see if that works. It's probably shot. Maybe shot. Hopefully it's shot. And that's going to be resolve the issue. Here we go. So I went in and I got in here and it's kind of dark and I do apologize because it is getting, it's kind of overcast today. But I uh, had everything hooked up. I switched the line to gas. Right here, switched it to gas, turned up the thermostat, and immediately the piezoelectric starter light started popping, started pulsing. So I hit the start button, but then I realized I had to purge the line, so I ran out, purged the line a little bit by pushing on the gas valve, and then came back in and pushed this, and sure enough, this is what we got. So now, she's working. Started right up, the igniter started clicking, and uh, yeah, I've got a nice, beautiful flame in there, as you can see. I don't know if I'm trying to see how what the limit of this uh, camera is, but as you can see there, I've got a nice blue flame. She's doing pretty well. Gonna let her run a few minutes and uh, work on closing her up. It's still kind of sprinkling out here today. It's about uh, six something, 6.30 or so. But yeah, so she's uh, started right up, new burner. Uh, again, a new uh, jet, gas jet here. And seems to be running pretty well. I'm very happy with that so far. Hopefully it'll keep going. Put this up. So let's see what I got here. How much gas have I got left here? Full tank. Batteries at three quarters. I do have a charger on it though. Although I'm a little wondering why it's only three quarters with a charger on it, but I don't know. Seems I have a recurring issue with batteries in the uh, coach batteries. But in the meantime, this is running. Um, this will hopefully start getting cold soon i don't have any of the doors on it um so i'm actually gonna get in here and and uh let's see here what do i have my oh wait, let's see here if i get some extra additional fake lighting here let's see here do this there we go and let's get to the flashlight there we go let's get some additional lighting here so we're gonna clean up these uh See, there's rust around the edges here where the doors are. Got doors go. Not too bad up here. Pretty good. You get down here though, you can see where that gasket failed, and it needs to get cleaned up. So I'm going to clean that up with some sandpaper and everything. 
repaint this, get it uh, in good shape, ready to go, and then we're going to reinstall the doors. We're also going to reinstall the uh, fridge light, which, as you can see here, is sitting in the floor of my office, and um, we're going to get that uh, reinstalled and ready to go as well. Well, after different ways between the spot welder, which wasn't clipped incorrectly, and uh, looking at doing self-tapping th screws from the front of my dimension, uh, and putting some more screw holes in it, which uh, these aren't aluminum. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use, I'm going to repurpose some of the 3M tape here that I had from the Dometic refrigerator, and I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to. Um, I'm going to adhere it to the back of the, of the aluminum door panel. Hopefully this two-way tape will work. Just going to rough it up a little bit, get some of the corrosion off. Because really, this thing is so like flip-flop like this, it's just really driving me nuts. So what I want to do is Get it cleaned off. And uh, see if I can hear this. With I put one strip on this one. I might put. I mean, we'll see what happens. We got one strip here. It's not quite wide enough, but you know what? It does the job. It does the job. So I'm gonna place it right here, flush up against the top. And then do this, and then just kind of my way across this thing and get it to adhere across the entire panel. And I know I've got a little overlap because of the but that might work actually because I'm gonna work some of this uh, hardware cloth in here uh, for my additional inside screen. I just wanna just wanna tack it in there. So I'm gonna cut this stuff the size and stick it behind there and uh, tack it in. But right now what I'm trying to do is try to get this door panel a little more rigid because it is like flopping everywhere. So I'm going to make these two T-ribs basically uh, here. And of course they're not perfect because I don't have a, a break or anything. I'm just doing this as I'm doing it. So there, there's that side, you can see, fairly reasonable. I'm going to take this one, it's all bent to heck, and take the camera probably and just try to Don't imagine your thumb too much. Try to get it straight as I can. Another strip of this stuff and put it somewhere where I can, I can make it reasonably upright and lay that tape right, right on. Ooh, got it pretty good on that end. Right here, take the scissors. Decent amount of so I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put it here on this side. Try to get tape peeled off. There we go. And of course, I forgot to sand down the. It is, there is a little bit of corrosion on this. Ooh. Rough it up a little bit. Go. 
I got myself a much more rigid Dometic door panel. Looks a little bit better. Um, I don't know if you notice it doesn't flip flop anymore. See that? It doesn't do the wobble anymore because it has two ribs behind it to keep it strong. So there you go. Yeah, that worked out pretty cool. A little mod for the lower aluminum panel there. A little dinged up here and there. Other than that, it was pretty cool. Well, I got the uh, those ribs glued on, and uh, making things uh, a little more professional looking on this. And as you can see here, I'm holding. I don't know how I'm doing this, but you can see this is a lot more rigid. And if it holds on a lot better, especially with those ribs. Up there and you can see that the flame is still going which is awesome and uh, so I gotta try to get this situated there nice and tight and snug now it snugs up real nice it doesn't wiggle around I'm gonna come in here and don't know if you can tell but there's uh, definitely some frost on my freezer element now of course I don't have the doors on so I'm gonna have to shut this off pretty soon um, so I don't waste uh, refrigeration energy but I would imagine that uh, both the freezer and the fridge are working fine if the freezer is doing what it needs to do is definitely uh, dehumidifying things so that's cool I mean that's cool literally cool it's cold um, so at least I know it works on gas now I just need to get the whole uh, 110 power thing fixed so that will be probably another video so here i've got this sanded out i'm going to mask it off with tape prime it i actually have a matching paint for you folks if you have these old um dometic refrigerators this is fusion uh krylon fusion and uh, this here is actually it says it is river rock 2323 is the is the uh, paint code and uh, it actually, I'm pretty sure it matches really super close to this kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, putty color or whatever. It's around these old Dometic refrigerators. And uh, so I tried a little sample on it and it was actually super close. So I'm going to reuse that instead of the gray that I bought, bought uh, earlier for this. So anyways, anyone, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, it's an ongoing process with these projects. And uh, as always, happy, safe, and healthy RVing.